Hey everyone, welcome to another tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own uh, web browser uh, application. So, what you see in front of you is kind of a skeleton for what we're going to need. So, I have my class for the application. I have a frame, and I've labeled the frame web frame. Uh, just to make things clear, so the main window that you're going to be seeing, that the user is going to be seeing, is going to be the uh, web application. And on top of the web application, I'm going to include a panel that's going to serve as a navigation bar. So let's get started with uh, this application. So the first thing that we need from WX is something called HTML2. So I'm going to say from WX import HTML2 and this contains all the widgets and uh, classes needed to build our web application so let's start with adding some content to the web frame so I'm just going to create a couple of variables and add them to the uh, the frame so self dot browser equals HTML2 dot web view and from web view I'm going to call new and pass self onto it you, and you need to pass self otherwise it won't work so immediately we can load a URL and for example we can start with a so when we launch a web browser usually you land at some uh, home page uh, I'm going to make that Google. And that's mostly it for the web browser. Now I'm going to think about developing the navigation bar. So what we need from the navigation bar is the browser. So the navigation bar and the browser need to communicate. So that's why I've included this additional argument browser for the uh, navigation bar. So once we've created a navigation bar, we need to save the browser to use for future arguments. So I'm going to say browser equals browser. Next, uh, the navigation bar will have an address bar. So I'm going to say self URL and I'm going to use a text control and you've all seen text controls from my previous tutorials so this shouldn't be anything uh, new parent will be self style will be WX TE process process enter and this basically just allows us to uh, include some action when the user presses enter, such as when you enter a new address and you hit enter to proceed to that new web address. Next, I need self URL. And for a new user, they might not know what this application might be doing, so we want to add a hint uh, such as enter URL to load page or just enter URL address that'll be simple enough and that's basically it uh, now a navigation bar should also have back and forward buttons so we're going to use WX button to create those buttons so I'm going to say back back equals WX button and say self style will be WX BU exact fit and I also need a forward button so I'm going to recycle that code and then the next thing that I need to do is uh, add some artwork to this. So I'm going to say back 
bitmap equals, and we use WX's art provider to get this. So WX art provider dot get bitmap. And what I'm going to use is WX art go back. And that makes sense since we're adding a uh, image or a button style to the back button. And now I'm just going to copy that over. Change that to the forward button. And instead of go back, we're going to say go forward. That's basically it. Now, if we try to launch this navigation bar as is, what we're going to see is uh, kind of an unorganized content. So we need to include sizers. So I'm going to say sizer equals WX box sizer. And I'm going to lay things out in a horizontal manner. I could leave this blank, but I'm going to include horizontal just in here, just to make things explicit. Now I just need to add everything onto the sizer. That was the back button. Now the forward button's next and the um, URL control. And that's basically it. Uh, oh, one more thing. We want to say set the sizer. Now that we've added buttons to this navigation bar, we have some um, Function, some actions to complete. So when somebody presses enters the address and presses enter, you want the web browser to be responsive and load that new URL. So I'm going to say replace pass with self browser load URL. And in here, I'm going to pass self URL value. No, not validate. Value. There we go. So what this is going to say is, okay, let's look at what value the user entered, and let's load that URL. And for the back button, what we want to include is event enable Self browser can go back. Ah, here we go. And in here, we just need browser can go forward. And we need to pass self browser go forward. And also on here we need browser go back. And I think I misspelled something up here. Yes, I did. Browse. Okay, so now that we've pretty much finished our navigation bar, we want to go back to the web frame. And on the web frame, we want to then add the navigation bar. So I'm going to create a new variable called navbar. And this is going to take self as a parent. And the browser will be self browser. 
And now to make sure things are going to look neatly on my application, I need to include a sizer on here. And things are going to be in a, in a uh, vertical order. So the navigation will be at the top and the web content will be below the navigation window. Now we just add everything to the sizer. Change this to one, and from here, I just need the browser. And lastly, we need to include set sizer. Self set sizer. And that's basically it. So I think we've completed our navigation with actions, and we've completed our web frame and included the navigation bar on there. So the last thing to do is to have the application create the web browser. So web browser equals web frame. The parent will be none. Uh, the title will be uh, my web app. And we can position it at 100 by 100 or whatever you prefer and we lastly need to call show okay so that's it for our application uh, so let me grab a terminal and launch this application so here I have a terminal and now I'm just gonna say Python my web browser app and great so we have a web application here with a URL text box here web content here actually sorry let me correct that so we actually do not have web content on here um, so one thing that I need to explain is that this WX HTML2 library is using uh, lib webkit GTK, which I've installed onto my Ubuntu desktop, but for some reason I've been having some miscommunication between the applications and the library. So what I'm actually going to have to do is restart and launch this application in a uh, Windows 10 operating system. So in Windows 10, you don't need a uh, lib webkit GTK because it uses, I think, uh, some like Microsoft Explorer or uh, Microsoft Edge library uh, as the backend. So when I launch this application, it'll display as it should. Hey everyone, welcome back. So I paused the video uh, just to switch from Windows, sorry, from Ubuntu over to Windows. And here I have Windows 10. But if you have an older version of Windows, the application should still just run fine. But I have my terminal here. And so now I'm just going to say Python web browser app, enter, and I get my desktop application, my little mini web browser, and I can also enter uh, a new URL and launch that as well. It might take a second just because this isn't the most uh, well-defined web URL, but here we are. So one thing that I mentioned in, uh, before I switched from uh, Linux to Windows 10 was that there are some differences in the backends between uh, Linux and Microsoft uh, Windows 10 and uh, even uh, OS X 
and that's because they're using different backends. So I mentioned that in Windows, there the backend is some um, Internet Explorer, and in Ubuntu, it's this uh, WebKit GTK library. For some reason, uh, WebGTK has not worked for me. I don't know if it's something that I'm not calling in my application, but it just isn't. It works fine all the time on Windows. I know, strange error. But, you know, it's probably a user mistake. I'm sure you guys can find the solution to this. I've, I don't have access to a, a Mac laptop so I can't test this application, but if anybody else has uh, any issues with that, you can probably look it through the documentation and try to figure that problem out. But that's it. That's how to create your own little mini web browser or just to embed uh, HTML content onto your desktop applications. And one uh, just quick warning, um, you wouldn't want to actually utilize this uh, little mini browser uh, for your day-to-day -day use. There are some security issues to be aware about. Um, so just be aware of that. All right. Hope you guys found this tutorial useful. Thanks.